Yo, what's going on guys, Arix here and welcome back to the second video on my brand new custom built PC courtesy of the guys over at Dino PC. Now if you guys saw the last video then you know what this one is all about, but in the event that you missed the last one then first of all you can find a link to that video in the description box down below. It's an unboxing and a full showcase of the system, the specs and what it looks like, but in this video I want to go over exactly how it performs. I've had this for about two weeks now and I've been using it as my main machine for the majority of that time, bar the odd day where I had to jump between my new and old machine until everything was transferred. But in short, this machine is an absolute beast. I love it. It does everything I need without even breaking a sweat. On a day-to-day -day basis, I use my PC to not only play games and record footage, but of course also to edit, render and upload videos, produce thumbnails and a whole host of other graphics, of course live streams, managing the day-to-day -day admin stuff and social media, and most recently, since my Oculus Rift arrived, VR2. So, it's safe to say that my PC gets a pretty serious workout on a regular basis, and yet no matter how much I throw at this thing, it just keeps cool and plows through it. In fact, one of the most impressive things that stood out to me was just how quiet this thing is. On my old machine, it was generally pretty quiet until I started rendering videos or playing slightly more graphically intensive games, but this one, I honestly barely even hear it. Which is also pretty nice because it means when I'm recording my audio, I don't have to remove the fan as a background noise, which is something I actually had to do prior to this. But that aside, the question you are all more than likely here to have answered is how does it perform when playing games? So let's get to that now. I know that there are a fair few games that people typically pick when running benchmark tests, but I'm going to do things a little bit differently and focus on a couple of games that I play a lot, something I've been playing recently, and of course a fan favourite. We're going to be testing out how this thing handles ultra settings on The Division, obviously a big one for this channel, Armour 3 Battle Royale, which is something that I play a lot when I'm not making videos, the Battlefield 1 Closed Alpha, which I'm lucky enough to be in and have been playing recently, and finally GTA 5. So kicking things off with The Division, admittedly I actually play this primarily on Xbox One, but that is largely because I've invested so much time into that copy of the game that I really can't bring myself to start over, but when testing this on PC, I have selected the Ultra Settings option in the menu, and this runs at a consistent 60fps throughout, whether it's a barren open area with few NPCs, a hectic gunfight, a cutscene, whatever it is, I did not see this thing drop below 60 for even a second. Annoyingly, my frame counter didn't actually record as part of the gameplay, so you are admittedly going to have to take my word for that, but if I compare that to my old machine that was running a GTX 980 Ti with a slightly older CPU, I was still able to run this on Ultra, but the frame rate did fluctuate ever so slightly at times when in gunfights or segments when explosions went off. So all in all, I'm really, really happy with how this one ran. So if we now switch over to Armour 3 Battle Royale, this one is an odd one because while it doesn't look quite as graphically impressive when compared to Battlefield or Division, it can actually be a little bit hard to get this one to run well because I believe Armour 3 isn't as well optimised or something like that. Regardless, whatever the reason, this also ran at a fixed 60fps with all settings turned up to max and the draw distance turned as high as it can possibly be, which is considerably higher than I ever had it before. On my old machine, if I wanted to max out those stats, the frame rate took a bit of a hit if I turned the draw distance up too high. But this time, again, a solid 60 no matter what. So moving on from there, if we now test the Battlefield 1 Closed Alpha, this is one that super impressed me, again using the Ultra Settings option in the menu. This ran between 100 to 150 FPS consistently, for the most part while running through open fields, engaging in general combat, and even with the rain pouring down like it is, it managed around 130 to 150 frames. The only time it really dropped down was when I was in more densely populated areas, perhaps with a gas grenade creating a cloud obscuring my view and explosions and the light going off. Only then did it really drop to around 105, but either way, I didn't really see it drop below 100, which was super impressive, especially when you consider how great this game looks. And finally, GTA 5. Again, with this one, I turned everything up as high as I could get it, and it ran at a consistent 60 FPS throughout, be that in the barren snowy environment at the beginning of the game, or the more busy areas driving through the city at high speeds, again, this remained consistent for the entire time. So, it's safe to say that this handled everything that I threw at it without any trouble at all. 
So finally, while this won't be quite the same experience for you guys, I plugged in my Oculus Rift and tested out the quick demo that comes with the headset. It's a visual experience that you can walk around in and explore. It shows scenes from a variety of different environments, and it's actually a really cool demo and a great introduction to VR. But it's safe to say that once again, the PC had no troubles with the VR experiences. In fact, the only issue I had is that the headset needs to be plugged directly into your graphics card. So I actually had to unplug my second monitor while I played this game. But that's hardly a negative as it's just a requirement of the device. Either way, in summary, this is a very, very powerful machine capable of handling all of my day-to-day -day tasks and some of the most demanding games out at the moment. It also means that you'll likely be seeing a few more PC games on the channel going forward. Obviously, I'll still buy on console as it's where the majority of my friends are and of course I know where some of you guys are, but when new games come out and PC is an option, in order to show you guys just how good a game can look, I will definitely be sure to factor in PC much more going forward. Now, to those of you guys interested, you can find a full spec list for the PC in the description box down below, plus a link to not only Dino PC's website, but also this very machine. The Arx Gaming Machine, as you see it here, is for sale on their site if you are so inclined. And again, if you missed the unboxing video, then you can find that link down below too. Finally, I again want to give a massive shout out to the guys over at Dino PC for building me this beast. It really is absolutely amazing, so thank you very much for that. And aside from that, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.